All right, hey there students. In today's video, we'll be going through the differences between cash basis accounting and accrual basis accounting. Talking about what the differences are and then going through a big example here using three transactions for a car wash. So we'll go through those three transactions. We'll show you how to account for them on both the cash basis and the accrual basis. And we'll show the impact of them on the income statement. Let's get into it. Okay, so for this car wash, talk about transaction one. So they actually did a more of a business sale. They actually washed 10 professional service cars for $50 each, and they washed it on December 23rd, 2021. But the client was invoiced, and that invoice was paid on January 14th, 2022. So you see the difference here. Now, if this was cash basis, we're really only focusing on when cash is paid or received. That's the cash basis. Accrual basis, that's more when revenue is earned or expenses are incurred. This has to do with when the event happened under accrual basis. Cash basis, only when cash is involved is when they record it. It's the main difference. Usually smaller businesses like sole proprietors, things like that, use cash basis. It's very simple. Accrual basis, usually for bigger companies that have more complex operations. But for the car wash, we're going to do both so you can see the difference. Now, this sale happened. So how do we account for this if it's under the cash basis? Well, we know right now that we did not receive any cash in 2021. So we're going to go ahead and record an accounts receivable here. And since nothing actually happened with cash, it's actually zero. Same thing with cash here. Zero as well. And then right here, we can go ahead and record. Let me move this up. So accounts receivable, nothing. Cash, also nothing. But you see here the client was invoiced and the invoice was paid later. However, we're focusing just on 2021. So did anything really happen there? No. However, in 2022, we did get cash, didn't we? We got 10 cars times 50, so $500. So we would go ahead and debit that there. And you would go ahead and do a, um, I'll go ahead and put a debit next to that so you know. In 2022, we actually got that. And we would record our sales revenue as well. And we have a zero in 2021, right? Because this is cash basis. No cash was received. But we're going to go ahead and credit $500 in revenue in 2022. Because that's when the invoice was paid. Remember, cash collected. Now, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it easier. Okay, so and uh, this actually will go ahead and record zero for here as well because no, nothing happened for accounts receivable. Now, if this was a cruel basis when the event occurred, well, the event occurred on December 23rd, 2021, didn't it? So if we go ahead and just move this over. So in 2021, that's actually when the event was, um, that event occurred. So we actually do record the $500 where the event occurred over here in 2021 because it's a cruel basis. They earned that revenue, right? When they actually performed the car wash, they earned that revenue. So you would record it in the year that it was earned. Now, did cash happen in 2021? It did not, right? They just recorded it. They did the service, but cash was never received until 2022. Revenue, though, they earned it right in 2021. And under the accrual basis or what they call the matching principle, we would record that same $500. And I'll do a debit here just so you can see. So debit for 500. And then down here, we'll go ahead and put sales revenue. And that's going to be a credit for 500 which happened in 2021. Now in 2022, that's when the client actually paid for it. So what happens there is we would credit out our accounts receivable because we're no longer waiting on it, right? And we're gonna actually debit here the cash that was received. So that's how that looks there. But again, accrual basis is when the event occurred and the event occurred in 2021. So that's when you record it. And then later you can make the adjusting entry when it was actually paid. 
So hopefully you see that so far between cash basis and accrual basis. Let's go to the next transaction. So transaction two, they recorded wages owed to employees on December 23rd, 2021 for four grand, but the employees weren't paid until the next week, January 2nd, or a little bit over January 2nd into the new year. So how do you really record that? Well, remember cash basis when cash is collected or paid is when you record it. Now, did they pay any cash here? The answer is no, they did not. So we're gonna record here a wages expense. So these are the accounts involved, cash, and a wages payable. Those are the actual accounts that are involved here. And so what we're gonna do, if it's cash basis in 2021, nothing happened. So it's actually going to be the same as above here, zero across the way. Don't have to worry about those accounts. Now in 2022, when the cash was finally paid to those employees, we are going to worry about that. We're going to have to record it because in cash basis, it's when it's paid. So we would record a wages expense for that amount once uh, the cash is paid out. And we're going to debit that. And we are going to credit cash for 4,000. And that is it, because again, it's only when cash is uh, paid or received. I know I keep saying that over and over again. Very important to know that cash basis, right? So that's what you would do for transaction number two uh, on the cash basis. Now, if this was a cruel basis, a little bit different. It's when the event occurred. The event occurred in 2021 right, when they recorded the wages to be owed. So what we do here, let's go ahead and move all this over. What we do, we actually go ahead and record the wages expense. Because that's when the event occurred, so you have to record that expense. So we're gonna do a debit for 4,000 for the wages expense in 2021. I'll move this out a little bit there. And we didn't pay any cash though. However, we did record a wages payable. So we would record a credit to wages payable showing that we owe them in the next year, right? On January 2nd, when that was owed. So, and actually I'll go ahead and erase that because that's actually gonna happen here. Now it's 2022, right? We already recorded the event, but we haven't paid them yet. So now, as you can guess, we have to pay out cash. So you're gonna credit cash for the 4,000 in 2022 and we have to reverse out what we had here for our wages payable so to reverse out a liability as you know we debited it we credited it in 2021 when we owed them but once we finally paid them the liability is going to be reversed out as a debit and then uh right here the wages expense was already recorded in 2021 so you don't re-record it's just reversing out the liability and then paying them in cash. So that's for transaction number two when we owed our employees some money. Let's take a look at transaction three. So transaction three here, we were invoiced by suppliers for $10,000 on December 27th, 2021 for supplies. And we paid that invoice actually on December 30th, 2021. So we were invoiced and we paid it in the same year. How does that look? Well, for cash basis, we're gonna have here supplies, cash, and supplies payable. And let's go ahead and make this look nice. So what happened here was we were invoiced on ten, uh, for $10,000 on that December 27th day. Well. If you know about cash basis, if we were just invoiced for it, but cash was not paid, right, or received or anything like that, you actually wouldn't do anything with that date, December 27th. However, we did pay the invoice in that same year on December 30th, so we would record it. So we would record, we would debit this, this supplies account for the $10,000 on that December 30th date, then we would also credit for 
$10,000 as well. And that's crediting the cash. Because again, on December 30th is when we did that. And then this would be zero down here. So let's format this nicely. Ah. Okay, so that's fine there. All right, and then 2022, nothing happened, right? Because you went ahead and were invoiced and you paid it in 2021. So it actually is zero that happened here. So moving on. Now, what happens if this is a cruel basis? Well, we were invoiced on December 27th, 2021. So actually, that's when the event was occurred. And so what we're actually going to record there, same stuff. So you move this over. So supplies here, right? On December 27th, and I'm actually going to write this here, December 27th is actually when you record this. Record a debit to supplies for 10000 because that's when the event occurred. You didn't pay it yet. That's when it was uh, incurred. And then right here, you would record your credit to supplies payable because you still owe that money on December 27th. Now, and I'll make this bigger here. So December 27th, however, on December uh, 30th, in that same year, we also did some, uh, we also paid it out. So I'm gonna put a little note next to this. We'll call it December 30th. We're actually gonna credit now the cash for that amount. And then what happens on supplies payable here, we now no longer owe it because we paid it out. So you would actually debit it now for 10,000, reversing that account out. But if you noticed, it all happened on December 27th, or sorry, in that year. Uh, so supplies payable here on December 30th. And I'll move this over just to make sure no one's confused. This was the December 27th date also. Hopefully you can see that there. December 27th, we actually had the event occurred, incurred. So we had the supplies going up for 10K. And on that same day, we recorded a payable. But then on the 30th, we actually finally paid for those uh, supplies. So we credit cash out. Then we would debit or reverse out our payable because we paid it. But nothing happened in 2022. So actually what we would do is we just do zero all the way in 2022 because uh, for both, right? Uh, it was all uh, paid and uh, they're just paid out and invoiced in 2021 for this third transaction. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go and look at the impact on the income statement for both cash basis and accrual basis. Okay, so now let's look how this impacted the income statement for both cash basis and accrual basis. So in actually 2021 for cash basis, you'll see Revenue was zero, expenses were zero, and these other accounts are actually on your balance sheet. So nothing really even happened here, which is very odd, I know, but with cash basis, it's only when cash is paid or received. So we actually had zero across the way for revenue costs and profit. 2022 though, in cash basis, things did happen. If you see, we had revenue of $500. So let's just go ahead and bring this over. $500, but our costs were 4,000 when we paid out our employees for the wages expense. So we have a $4,000 wage expense there. Now, normally this wouldn't happen. They wouldn't have that much of a loss, but for this example, we only had one set of revenue just to show you kind of how this works. And so we're just gonna take this number equals this number minus this number. $3,500, it's a negative, but you can see it happened in 2022 because that's when cash was collected or paid. 2021, nothing happened for cash basis. Now for the income statement on the accrual side, it's going to be a little different. Notice in 2021, we actually had revenue because again, that's when the event occurred. Cash didn't matter. So we just bring this number down and use the same number in 2021. And actually, it's going to be the same for costs as well. As you can see, we incurred this wages expense in 2021 when that event occurred. So now we just move this over and we'll just do the exact same 
calculations with the negative 3,500 in gross profit, but notice how it's in 2021 is when they recorded that event. 2022, as you might guess, nothing really happened. A lot of balance sheet accounts, accounts receivable, cash, supplies, but no expenses and no revenue. So it's actually going to be zero across the way as well. Nothing uh, happened on the income statement in, in those time periods. So that really is the main difference between cash basis and accrual basis. To sum it up, cash basis accounting, usually for smaller businesses, it's very simplified. And it's when the cash is collected or received is when you record it in that period. It doesn't really follow the matching principle. However, with accrual basis, it's when the event is occurred or incurred where when you have revenue or expenses, when the event happened is when you record it. So that's about it. We went through each transaction, how it impacted the general ledger under cash basis and accrual basis, then talked about the impact on the income statement for each. If you enjoyed this video, please like. It really helps support the channel and subscribe to make sure you don't miss another one. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.